Today, we're going to talk about using OneDrive to manage your documents. Although I'm demonstrating from OneDrive for Business, most of the information is going to apply if you are using a personal OneDrive as well. The main difference is in a personal OneDrive, you will have fewer sharing options. Where I work, I spend a lot of time answering questions about when to use OneDrive versus SharePoint or Teams. OneDrive is ideal for storing personal documents or documents that you will share with only a few people. Let's start by looking at how to create a new file in OneDrive. Navigate to the top of the screen and select the dropdown next to New. Here you see you have the option to create a new folder, Word document, Excel, etc. For this demonstration, I'm going to create a new Word document. A new tab will open for your Word document and it will generically be called Document. If you click on the word document in the ribbon at the top of the screen, you will get a drop down box where you can change the file name. For this demonstration, I am going to be jotting down some video ideas, so I'm just going to call the document Video Ideas. The updated file name will automatically save to my OneDrive in the My Files section. And notice that OneDrive automatically saves as I make updates to the file. And here I have some ideas about videos that the training team might want to create. When I'm done updating the file, I can go ahead and close the tab. And then we'll be back in the My Files section of OneDrive. And you can see that my video ideas document is right here at the bottom of the list. I might decide that I want my colleague to give me some input about my video ideas, so I have decided to share the file with her. If I select the file, you will notice that there are a couple options for how you can share. You have the share option in the ribbon at the top of the screen, as well as in the toolbar next to the title of the document. When I click share, a send link dialog box will appear. All I have to do is type in the name or email address of the person that I want to share with. Depending on how your admin has set up your OneDrive, you may or may not be able to share with people outside of your organization. Next to the sharing box, you have this pencil icon that lets you decide whether or not the person you're sharing with can edit your document or only view the document. You also have the option to review the link settings. Because I'm in a demonstration environment, I do have the ability to share this document with anyone who has a link. And this means that literally anyone on the internet who gets a hold of this link could then have access to your document. Most companies will disable this option. The next option is to share with anybody within your organization who has a link. The third option is to share with people who already have access. I only select this link when I've already shared the document with someone and they have misplaced their link, so I just want to send them another one. Most of the time, I select specific people so that I can control how many people are going to be able to access and or edit my file. Now that I've selected specific people, you see that I have the option to toggle allow editing on or off depending on my preference. Now I want my colleagues input on my video ideas, so I'm going to allow her to edit. Since editing is turned on, I now have the option to decide whether or not my colleague should be able to open in review mode only. If I toggle this on, what it means is that my colleague will only be able to add comments or make changes to the document if track changes are turned on. If track changes are turned off, they will not be able to make changes to my document. And then finally, depending on how your admin has set up OneDrive, you may or may not be able to block downloads. Once you have made the changes to your link settings, you will simply click apply. From here, you have the option to type in a message so that the person receiving the link will have a little bit of context. OneDrive will automatically connect to Outlook and send the person an email with the message that you have typed in here. The other option that was added fairly recently as of recording this video is the option to grab a copy link. The benefit of this is that you can get this link and send a much more detailed message from Outlook, or you can copy and paste the link into Teams. You will use whatever option makes the most sense to you. I'm just gonna go ahead and send my colleague a link to my file. 
and you will get a dialog box that verifies that the link has been sent. When I refresh my screen, you will see that the sharing status has changed from private to shared, so I can quickly see which files I am sharing with people. Now my colleague can access this file and add additional information. The next thing that we're going to take a look at is how to manage access to the file. Click the three dots next to the title and then select Manage Access. A Manage Access pane will appear on the right hand side of the screen where you will have a few options. In this scenario, my coworker has moved on to a different job in the company so she no longer needs access to my file. I can choose stop sharing, but if I had shared with multiple people, this might not be the best option. Instead, I can click the drop down next to Jessica's presence icon, click the X next to her name, and I'll get a dialog box that will ask me to verify if I really want to remove her access. And then I will simply click remove. Another thing you can do is go into the options for the link itself and you can either change whether or not the people can edit or view, or you can remove the link entirely. Once you delete this link, it will remove all access to your file. That option is typically used when you gave company-wide access to a link rather than access to individuals. Now you can see under direct access, I am the only one who can now read this file. If I refresh my screen again, you will see that it changed from shared to private. Speaking of sharing files, now we're going to take a look at the shared menu item on the left hand side of the screen. Above the content area, you will see two tabs, shared with you and shared by you. On the shared with you tab, you will see any files that have been shared with you directly or that have been set to share with the entire organization. I am in a demonstration environment, so there's not a lot here right now. When you click on shared by you, you can see every file that you have shared with other people. For example, most of these files are recorded Teams meetings that are shared with everyone who was in the meeting. Another option you have to see everything that you have shared is to run a sharing report. Click settings in the upper right hand corner, and then you will select OneDrive settings. From there, you will go all the way over to the left hand side of the screen and select more settings. And then from here, you can run a sharing report. You must choose a folder for the sharing report to go to. You can select any folder that's on the list or you can create a new folder if you want. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to create a new folder and call it sharing reports. Then I will click Create, select the Sharing Reports folder, and click Save. Now it can take several minutes for this report to run depending on how many files you have shared. So I'm going to navigate back to my OneDrive and look for the Sharing Report. You will get an email when the sharing file is ready to view. I have opened the sharing report and intentionally redacted other people's information for their privacy. What we're going to look at is the type of information that you can find. First, you have the item type column that tells you what kind of file that is being shared. Then you can see what permission has been granted and to whom. The next column over allows you to see the email address of the person this file has been shared with. The link type column is very helpful because it lets you know if the file is shared with anyone, the entire organization, or specific people. My best practice is to check any permissions that are for anyone or organization. The last thing that we're gonna look at today is the recycle bin. If you select a file and click delete, the file will go to the recycle bin, which you can access by clicking on the icon on the left-hand side of the screen. The files will stay in the bin for up to 90 days before they are automatically deleted. To restore a file, select it and then click the restore button at the top of the page. The file will go back to the location where you deleted it from. 
If you click a file in the recycle bin and select delete again, it will go to the second stage recycle bin. This recycle bin shares the same 90 day timer as the regular recycle bin. Again, you can click on the file and select restore. If you truly want the file to be gone, you can select it and click delete. But please note that if you permanently delete the file, you will not be able to restore it and neither can the admins. There are many more features that we could discuss in OneDrive. If you're interested in learning more about OneDrive for Business, please leave me a comment below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.